I know it's out there, somewhere, hiding in the depths, down in the dark, relentless, deep, watching, waiting to return again. This time, I'm going to find it. This time, I'm going to catch the narwhal. Hey, Ahab, what's with the brooding? I thought we were going fishing. What'd you do with the beer? <laughs> Oh, is that a narwhal? Whoa. Nah. It's just foam. Uh, anyway, hey, I'm Bill Manley. I'm Terrence Sullivan. We're back again with another brewer in the beer geek. This time we're in the majestic Puget Sound among the rolling waves here, searching for the elusive narwhal. Yeah, I'm pretty certain narwhals don't live in the Puget Sound. So they, that may be, in fact, the case. I don't really know where narwhals live. I know that there is water here, very rocky water here. Uh, and I know that it's cold, and so that's a better shot at finding a narwhal than like Chico Creek or something like well, that. So, you know, where we find one, we don't find one. We got uh, well, we brought our own. two in the glass is better than one in the bay here, so we're, <laughs> we're, we're good to go. Absolutely. You know, narwhal uh, came about a few years ago when we were, you know, trying to develop this high altitude series beers. Yep. We already had two real behemoth beers uh, with Bigfoot barley wine and then Hoptimum. And you know, what What better way than introduce an Imperial Stout into our portfolio? Yeah, for sure. You know I mean? Sierra Nevada is pretty famous for being a hop forward brewery and both Bigfoot and Hoptimum are kind of like full on hop kick you in the face assaults. Uh, we wanted to do something just as bold, just as intense, but kind of do it from the other end of the beer spectrum and really focus on the malt. And you know, so Narwhal Imperial Stout was like a really good choice because it's so malt focused. This is a malt forward monster. I yeah, mean, definitely. And we, we developed this beer um, after a couple Imperial Stouts that we made over the last few years. We had the 30th anniversary Fritz and Kin beer that we made with yeah. Fritz Maytag from Anchor Steam. Um, and then also too in beer camp, we had a, a really nice Imperial Stout that we made about three or four years ago that was uh, excellent. Took those two recipes, kind of sat down and scratched our head and said, hey, this looks like a good one. Mm. Hey, you're taking the best parts of two really good beers and putting them together to make something different. That's really great. And yeah. uh, you know, I'm a little worried we're gonna go overboard here if we have too many more <laughs> of these. So let's get back into uh, calmer waters and uh, taste this out. Stay with us for a second. Cheers. Cheers. So we're back on dry land. Thankfully. You know, thankfully <laughs> yeah. the boat. One yeah. of those was getting a well, My belly is still doing that. Yeah, I was get, getting a little much. Uh, we're here on the beach now, and you know, the beach is not really the, uh, you know, the place you think about to talk about an Imperial Stout, but this beach happens to be on the Puget Sound in Seattle in the fall, and you know, it's cold. Frankly, it's, it's frankly it's damn it's cold, and maybe the Imperial Stout is the perfect beer for the moment. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, we talked a little bit about this earlier. You know, this this beer is all about the malt character. We use six different malts. Um, and they really kind of shine through, you know, different types of roasted malts. And you really start getting those real kind of uh, coffee notes that you, yeah. you find with uh, using these type of malts. You get kind of some berry notes. You also get some tobacco notes, some uh, little, tobacco. little chocolate, yeah. uh, chocolate notes in there too. Um, and that's all balanced out, you know, whenever you take those first sips, you get a little initial kind of astringency from those grains. And then it's got 60 IBUs, so you get a little bit of bitterness there. But that really mellows out with the alcohol content mm -hmm. in this beer. It's 10.2, so it really kind of finishes kind of warming on your palate. It just yeah. makes for a great, great drinking beer. Yeah, for sure. You know, as the weather gets colder and, you know, fall really sets in and moves into winter, I turn to this beer more and more often. It's, it's kind of the perfect, like, after-dinner yeah. beer or beer that you'd have, uh, you know, in addition to dessert or maybe even in place of, or, you know, kind of sitting around the campfire with some buddies. Right. I mean, it's really, really the way well, to go, you if know. If you're all by yourself, you know, in the living room, sitting in your lazy boy yeah. and you got the fire going, it goes down pretty yeah, well. It's good then, for that too, too I guess. Yeah. I mean, really. Uh, no, uh, seriously, I mean, this is a really great cold weather beer. I think you really like it. It is a big malt bomb. Uh, it's out this fall. It'll be out till about January or so. So uh, check it out yeah. if you can. You'll really enjoy, enjoy it, I think. It. Cheers. Cheers. What the hell are you wearing? Well, you told me to wear a sweater. That's a fisherman sweater. What are you fishing for? Pudding pops? <laughs> I got on. it from my dad. <laughs>